Guild Paul Informer video. Uh, this is episode four of Hay's Hobby Video Log. Uh, I'm just filming the introduction down here at the Northwest Gaming Centre. We have a gaming day, which you'll see a video about coming up on the channel. Um, it's post Christmas, so it's the 28th of December. So I'll just show you some goodies that I got for Christmas. You may have seen it on the Facebook page, but I have a new, well, a new, I have an airbrush I've never had before. So this video today is going to actually not be about an airbrush. It's going to be um, sort of a beginner's guide introduction to painting and to hobbying and the sort of things that you need in terms of equipment. Uh, as you'll have seen from my previous videos, I don't do anything special when it comes to painting uh, and the same goes for the equipment that I have. I've got a couple of different paintbrushes. I've got standard paints and a paint palette. So I'll just go through the stuff that I use uh, just to show that it isn't rocket science and mainly for beginners out there that want to start painting and hobbying. It might be quite a good introduction to some idiot behind me. <laughs> um, so we'll do that, uh, we'll just go through that. So apologies for those guys that are a bit more advanced and um, it's like pulling teeth saying, this is a paintbrush, this is a paint pot, this is water, mixing water, paint, paint on model. But um, I think it hopefully will be quite useful for some of the newer people trying to get into painting. Uh, just to show how accessible it is, I literally have a paintbrush, a water pot, and a palette and my paints, and I can sit watching the TV doing it, just painting and things like that, so you don't even need a sort of dedicated area. A bit of toilet roll or kitchen towel to, to get any spills or dry your brush, and that is it. So I'll come back again when I've got all my equipment laid out, and we'll talk through things one at a time. Um, I'm keen when I first started painting myself, uh, looking at YouTube videos and things, there wasn't really anything out there really for the beginner. There's a lot of advanced techniques like um, like uh, mixing um, colour theory and um, airbrushing and things. So this is more, um, we, can, we can get a bit more advanced as we go through the series, but this is just a very beginner's guide. So. Hope you enjoy it and I hope you get something out of it. And if not, uh, and you're more advanced painter, at least you can just see the sort of things that I use and how basic my stuff is. So please post any comments um, in the video and we'll we'll go from there. Cheers, guys. So here we are back in the hobby dungeon. Uh, I've just laid out all the equipment that I use, the very basic equipment I use for painting. Um, so we'll just go along the line just to show you that it really isn't anything Spectacular. Um, there's a shop near me called Fed Aldus, uh, which sells art supplies, and I've just bought some uh, brushes from there. These white ones are from there. So I've got one crappy one, as you can see from the head, um, that I just use for mixing my paints with, and then I've got another one uh, which I use just to actually do all my work on, work with. So. Uh, as you can see, it's not particularly thin, uh, it's not really focusing, so apologies for that. Um, what I've found with paint brushes for, for doing base coats, I actually just use the same brush size for everything. This is actually a one, um, but it's not actually the size, I don't find that it's the size of the brush hair end that makes a difference, it's the point that you can get. Um, and these I found, they're only two quid or something, 150 for a brush, they're nothing special. Uh, they hold quite a good end for a couple of months, I find, um, so they, they're pretty cost effective. Uh, I've got um, an army painter brush, which I use for dry brushing. So again, it's a bit of a gnarled end now, I'll probably need to replace that soon, but that's just for dry brushing. I've got a Games Workshop Citadel Shade, which is I use for washes, which is just a thicker end, um, just to get the wash on. I actually don't really like this very much, I've only recently bought it. I had one um, before for, for uh, washing, which was much better, but I can't seem to find the same one again. But again, this does the job, so it's fine. Then I've got some hobby tools, so I've just got a... Um, uh, a hobby blade which I just use sometimes for resin taking off little bits and things and then a games workshop I think it is a set of what, tweezers whatever pliers cutters whatever to cut stuff off bases um, and then army painters super glue um, some plastic glue um, and I do use the army painter super glue for resin uh, the Plasticly doesn't work on that. 
Uh, and then I've got a hot, old plastic water container, which I use for water. And then my paint palette, which is just, I've actually nicked this off my girlfriend, who's a bit of an artisty designer. So she's given me this when she doesn't want to use it anymore, but it's fine. Any, but I've found that you can use anything. I never used to use it like a proper paint palette, just anything plastic works fine. Uh, and then a few things just for basing. I've just picked this up from um, Element Games. It's just some like flowery um, bush stuff that it's got self-adhesive back. So you just literally pick it off with some pliers or something and stick it on the base and it sticks itself. Sometimes I add a bit of super glue to keep it on. And then as you'll have seen with some of my fish bases, I've got like water effect. So this is a bit like sort of clear PVA. So you just literally paint the base blue and then put this once it's dry put this over the top and it will dry clear to look like water and then I just have a massive toolbox full of like so I've got a wide variety of different ones I've got really old school um, bad mood yellow games workshop paints um, and then I've got some of the newer uh, Citadel paints uh, and some washes some of the newer washes, Citadel technical washes which and dry brush stuff. I don't really, I mean, I suppose they will have improved their formula and stuff as the years have gone on, but I don't notice much difference between the old school stuff and the new stuff. And this stuff is my absolute godsend. I use it for everything. Um, a good Agrax Earthshade wash on anything really brings out all the details, so I couldn't recommend that stuff anymore and blood for the blood god for some shiny blood uh, works a treat now with all of these paints what i tend to do is um, i use my scabby brush that i've dropped on the floor <laughs> my scabby brush i literally take a couple of dollops out of the lid of one of these mix them on my paint thing and then add a couple of drops of water keep going until you get like a milky watery texture I tend to over water I try to thin them more than I need to just so that uh, I think one of the main problems people have when starting to paint is they make they paint stuff on too thick and what that does is you lose all the detail and it's really difficult it's easier to, to, to put more paint on than it is to take paint off that's kind of the rule of thumb I, I live by so that's kind of the equipment the basic equipment I've used none of it's expensive it all can be picked up from your local gaming store. Element Games do online delivery, so have a look on there if you need anything else. Um, if anybody's got any better brushes or any other things that they use that they find essential, please put them in the comments. Let me know and let anybody else watching this know. So as I've said, this is kind of a, an intro. I'm sorry if this has bored some of you long-term hobbyists that this is all just common sense. But for those first starting out, I found it really difficult finding intro videos just for what basic equipment that you need. And this is all I have. So you've seen the models that I've put up on previous posts. This is all I use. Nothing um, more advanced than this. Moving on from this though, I'm going to probably put a few videos up. As you may have seen, I got an airbrush. Uh, this lovely airbrush for Christmas. So um, I'm going to start maybe doing some idiot's guide to airbrushing because I'm an idiot and I'm first starting out with this so I think there'll be quite humorous videos to watch and I must say a massive shout out to Johnny Cannon, um, friend of the channel uh, because he has kindly donated his old compressor to me uh, as well as a box full of bits um, to help me start with my airbrushing so it's not too expensive. I've got some airbrush cleaner, I've got some airbrush thinner, I've got some cables and um, a cleaning thingamajig. So you'll probably be able to watch with hilarity at me trying to attempt to use an airbrush. So hopefully uh, Johnny mentioned that it took him about a good year and a half to get any good with an airbrush so I'm hoping that uh, it'll be a bit quicker than that for me. He did say he did it sporadically, so it wasn't full on learning. Um, and I'll post another few videos up. I've I've got these. I've got mash, uh, just undercoated, uh, built undercoated, based, and I've got stave, uh, which I'll probably you'd be my first test models with the airbrush. 
Uh, I'll try it on a piece of paper first, but um, hopefully with these guys being much bigger, one of the bigger models in the range, the Guildball range, they may take better to airbrushing than some of the smaller ones, so they seem like my test, decent test subjects. So that's it for now. Uh, I will post up some more painting videos. I've got the engineers to paint, I've got my brewers to paint, so there'll be a mixture of sort of airbrushing and basic painting videos like Harry's, and we'll see how many I get out of that. So thanks guys, and um, hope you've enjoyed it, maybe picked up anything, or just call me an idiot and tell me how I can be doing it much better. But I hope you've enjoyed these, uh, and happy guild balling, and comment, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. All right guys, I'm back. Um, I've put together my airbrush. So I've got, this is the airbrush here, uh, and I've attached it to this hose, which goes all the way along, and then attaches onto the compressor here. Uh, and the compressor then is just plugged in to the mains. Um, I do have two bits left over in my airbrush box. Uh, I haven't read the instructions and I've not watched any clips, so I actually don't know what they are. I'm guessing that's just the paint cap, a smaller one, because I've got quite a large one on it already. And then there's a, another weird tool. Um, maybe it looks more like um, a spanner or something. So. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to break this by turning it on without it in. Um, and it's been mentioned, Johnny mentioned to me that uh, it's best to have this on just under two. So you can see the pressure gauge here and there's a bit of a, there's just a knob here that you can turn to increase or decrease the pressure. Uh, you can probably see if I, if I, it's not really doing anything, but... It was doing before, when I turn that, whatever. But anyway, when I turn it on, you can it should boot up and rumble. There you go. Uh, and then it turns off. I, initially, I thought that this was broken because every time I turned it on, it would do it for a couple of seconds and then it would turn off. But then, when I press this, if you can hear that, it is actually firing air out. And then it must just fill up with enough pressure for the air, and then it, and when that air runs out of the brush, it fires back up to get back to the right pressure again. So I've got air. That's a good start. So now I might just try, put a bit of paint in the, um, the bit on the top, and see if I can spray something on a piece of paper to get anything resembling any effect. Now I think the key to this airbrush is you push it down to get the air out and then you actually pull it back like that to release the paint. I've been told pulling it back or just with no air you're going to clog it up because all that's going to do is release the paint with no air and similarly if it's on and you pulled it back and you just let go it's going to clog up. You need to release the paint back and let the air go before otherwise it's going to clog it all up. So we'll, we'll give it a go. As I said, I'm a complete new noob with this, um, and we'll we'll <laughs> just experiment. So I'll come back when I'm ready with the paint. Uh, I'm going to just add a couple of drops of airbrush thinner, and I've got a couple of droppy uh, army painter ones. So I'll probably just use the red as a test, um, just so that I could see where it's going on a piece of white paper. And I'll come back. See you in a bit. Uh, again, I've come back because uh, I'm feeling like a bit of an idiot. This is the top uh, paint holder that just screws on on there. I was assuming that the top, this top bit actually screwed off so I could put paint in there, but I can't seem to get it off. So whether it's tight or whether I'm just an idiot and you actually put the paint in that top bit, but I thought that might be a bit awkward putting it in there and then trying to turn it upside down and putting it on there, I don't know. So I'm gonna get, have a go at just dropping some droplets into there and then turn the airbrush up and screw it back on. So I'll come back after that. Please comment, tell me if I'm being an idiot and if that's the right thing to do. No doubt Johnny will be on the phone berating me that I've not listened to his instructions, but there you go. Right, well, uh, we'll funny. I'm going to have to do this left-handed if I'm recording, but I've put some <laughs> paint in the top. It did seem a bit runny, so this is probably going to be a disaster. So I'll try and just spray it and see. Uh, so push it down to get some air. Mm. 
and then pull it back. There you go. Can you see that? It's a bit pinky. Yeah. Wow. I'm actually pretty impressed. That's quite easy. Um, how good that's going to be on an actual model. But you really don't need, as you can see, I put the tiniest bit of red paint in there. Um, and it's actually working. I'm amazed. First time and it's working. So let's have a go. I'm going to, I don't know whether to go straight onto a model. I need to get, I'm going to wash this out then because this has got red in. Um, I don't want red tartan on my thing. Maybe I'll try and do the tartan on the guys. Right, so I'll come back. my first attempt on Stave. As you can see, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, I think there's too much water and I was holding it a bit close so it was, um, uh, it wasn't spraying very well. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it now though. I think if I hold it a bit further away um, and it's not, I think I had, it was just a bit too runny. But um, I'm pleased with how it actually has stayed on the cloth. Uh, I'm going to just let this dry and I'm going to have a go on mash instead. Now I'm starting to get the hang of it. Uh, so we'll come back in a minute after I've had a go so doing back. First attempts on stave and mash using my airbrush. Uh, it's, <laughs> I started with red and I didn't clean it out properly. So I put a bit of white, I put white in as well. So it's actually gone pink. Uh, I think I might actually stick with them with pink now after that um sorry there you go i think the issue i'm having at the moment with these um is it seems to me that um it's kind of just spraying water it seems like it's spraying water which i guess is because i've i've made it too diluted too runny um and there's too much airbrush thinner in there so i'm just concerned everybody keeps saying about not having your paint too thick otherwise it will clog up the airbrush so I think because of that, um, I'm, I've, I've made it far too thin. Uh, and as you can see on on his, his cloth, it's all really wet and runny. So I think I'm going to have to be a bit braver and just have more of the colour um, and less thinner. And also what because it was so runny, uh, when I was pulling it back to release some paint, it was putting a bit of paint on, but then it was basically just blowing all the paint around. Um, and all the wet and water around. So I'll let these guys, these dry um, and I'll clean the airbrush out I think and I'll probably just go again uh, and try uh, with a bit thicker paint and see what effect that has instead. Also I think I was probably doing it a bit too close so it was just blowing the paint around rather than just spraying it on. But it's a learning progress, this is what these, po these blogs are for, just to show uh, how you can go from absolutely no knowledge of an airbrush to hopefully do something all, all right with it. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'll be so back guys, we're back. Uh, I've had a slight bit more success with it. So I've gone with some white to just put some highlights on. And now you can see um, I've actually managed to use some skin colour. Um, and uh, not amazing. Uh, but first attempt with an airbrush to get uh, some slight skin colour on some of the skin areas. Um, I'm pretty pleased uh, with. Um, it's just drying so it is a bit wet looking still. But uh, you can see how it's starting to, to come together a bit and then scum. Uh, so I'm pleased. Uh, and just to show what a complete idiot I am, uh, this is my airbrush and I was <laughs> really struggling to get paint into the hopper at the top, um, not realising that it's just a pop-off top like so. Uh, I was trying to screw the top on and off, uh, which was obviously uh, not working. So what I was doing was unscrewing this all of this bit and then just having to use a brush to get the paint in there. So um, thanks to, again, Johnny Cannon again, rescuing me, saying you're a complete plank and all you need to do is just pop the top off and you can put, um, put the paint in there. So this is over and out for me for this uh, hobby video log. I'll, next episode, um, I'll probably do a bit more work on these guys. 
try and just smooth out that skin colour a bit because it is just a first coat um, and it is a bit of a test. But I'm pleased with how it's gone, um, considering I have absolutely no airbrush knowledge and haven't really watched any tutorials. Um, it is fairly straightforward. At the moment I'm still a bit dubious because I think I've probably spent more time doing um, just doing this than I'd probably spend on a whole bloody model um, before. So we'll see if this actually has a better effect or saves any time in the long run, but for now, um, I'm learning a new skill, so be pleased with that. Uh, cheers, guys. <laughs>